Hey, let's look at how to install Commander Platform 8 on OpenShift today. So OpenShift is a Kubernetes distribution, basically, and uh, Commander 8 uh, runs perfectly on Kubernetes. That's kind of the uh, preferred environment anyway. And in order to run it, you have to run a couple of different components. And there are provided Helm charts actually to install those components on a Kubernetes environment. And with the latest release, we made uh, those Helm charts also working on OpenShift with a couple of specifics. And I will walk you through that very briefly today. So first of all, if you're going to the documentation or linked in this blog post, you will find the Kamuna Platform Helm repository where you can find all the, uh, all the specifics around the Helm charts. And we can actually leverage that to install it. And there is an OpenShift folder here where you can find the specific information, what's different to a, let's say, a normal uh, Kubernetes environment. And the basic thing is that it's uh, around the security um, contexts that OpenShift knows. And that requires you to uh, do a couple of adjustments in like what users um, you use and what, what write certain files have or um, yeah basically that's more or less it so um, it's all described here the uh, the normal thing what you can what you what you could do is you could um, simply leverage um, the uh, the basically configuration values as a default from the commander platform which you have here and then there are um, the changes for OpenShift, which are then described in that file, right? So as you can see, it's not that much. And there's now my computer hangs for whatever reason. Thank you, uh, Firefox. Um, okay, we're back in the game. And then you can simply um, use Helm install to install those uh, this Helm chart with those values, which you can set and over override defaults and the typical Helm thing, okay? So um, let's try to do this. So um, I know that probably you don't do that at home, <laughs> but I wanted to use the Red Hat OpenShift UI, actually, the web interface. So I didn't want to use kubectl or the OC um, thingy. And it did work actually. So I, I, I found that quite um, fascinating. Maybe you're not that fascinated by that because infrastructure and code, but anyhow. Um, the one thing I want to say is that there, um, what's described here is how you can basically set the values correctly to run in the default security context that comes with OpenShift. Um, there is a second way, and that's what I did for the demo, because it's actually, um, if, especially if I'm not using the uh, command line tooling, it's a little bit easier for me here. And that is, that I basically added or adjusted a couple of permissions. I added some road bindings here saying I'm, I'm giving privileged uh, permissions to certain um, service accounts here so that they can run in kind of whatever mode they want to. So I don't have to adjust certain things in the, in the Helm chart, which makes it easier to um, to run here, probably not what you want to do in production. But having said that, I can basically in OpenShift um, go to the um, Helm support here. I can add my Helm repository, which I already did. So I can search for all the charts there and the Commodore platform chart is also there. I can install it. And then this gives me kind of the default values here. Um, that's exactly what you can also find here on GitHub and I downloaded that um, actually beforehand. And what I did, because I don't have command line and cannot merge those files on the fly, I basically merged them um, kind of manually using uh, simply a diffing tool here. And then I have a file which everything is combined. So I can use that in order to install my Helm chart. And this should be actually uh, relatively quick. 
So um, it now starts up the various resources. You can already see that there are different services and now it starts up all the pods and do these kind of things. While it is doing that, let me um, tell you one second thing I adjusted in the, um, in the YAML file here to configure it. And you can probably already see there are a couple of URLs which I configured and I'll show you where they come from in a second. But um, this is required for um, basically the login, the OAuth thingy where um, we're using an identity component which we start up. So you could use your existing key cloak or something else, but I'm using something we start up as part of the platform. And that means we need to be redirected to the identity part and that needs to know who we are and then basically redirects us back. And that's why we have to define or have to um, configure the right endpoints here, which I did. If you wonder how you know those things, um, so there's, of course, documentation, but um, additionally to the Commando Platform Helm part, which is the official Helm charts, there's a second repository, which comes in quite handy, which are the Commando 8 Helm profiles. So there um, we have a, a, let's say, catalog of different configurations um, we used in basically in customer scenarios for certain situations. So maybe on AWS, something is um, a little bit different than on, on GCP, for example, for ingress or for a couple of other things. So everything that is uh, um, specific to certain scenarios might be found in here. So for example, if I want to do ingress with Nginx, um, I can find interesting values here, which need to be set. Right. And it makes a lot of sense to sniff around those profiles to find um, the right properties you might need in your in your scenario. And that also led me to setting the right URLs here. You can, of course, also simply read through the uh, like the properties file here. But anyhow, um, ba -ba 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 should be up by now. So I'm seeing a lot of blue things here. That's obviously good. What um, there, there are multiple ways to look into that now. So I could, for example, look into the resources that are um, basically deployed. So you see a couple of configuration secrets, for example, but um, also uh, services here, like for example, the, um, let's look at some web application like Operate. We see that we have one pod that's up pretty cool. So you can see um, also the pod, you can look into the pod, you can look into the logs. So um, a relatively easy way to um, to look into, into all of these things. So there it is. Looks good. Um, now we can go to the administration side of things here or the view. First of all, you see the same things here. So you can, for example, look at all the pods that are currently running. So um, you have a good overview here. And what you can also do is uh, on networking, you can define certain routes, which I um, already did. Um, so basically a route here and I show you that with operate is relatively simple. And of course you can also provision that via, via YAML. Um, so you don't have to click around, right? I'm just, I'm um, sometimes I like it. So, um, <laughs> that's what I did. I basically mapped the, um, operate service here, uh, port 8080, um, to operate, uh, to this URL. And that's also what I configured at the other, um, at the, uh, at the identity component, um, so that it knows where operate is coming from. Okay. Then I have configured my auth. So that's the, um, basically the login part, the login application that comes with it. Um, and, um, key cloak, if you want to look into key cloak, um, that's also possible. And then you could add routes for optimizing the other components. Um, but we just keep it there so we can go to operate and that should work now. So yeah, we get the login screen. If you, if you saw that we were forwarded from operate to auth, um, and you see that the redirect is still here. So it redirects us to operate. It works. I need, um, to log in. I can log in as an admin, I guess at least now, um, we, hang on, we can look into, um, our secret. Where is the, um, hang on, there's an admin secret. Um, mm, 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 mm. I was 
is that? Is it key cloak? Are uh, the key cloak secrets work? Um, there's an admin password. Let's see if the, that should actually work. No, I don't have it stored. Let's see. Nope. Then, um, good question. I should have prepared that, but it's also a lot of fun to do that together. So what I can do is um, I can go to key cloak. I can definitely log in with the admin password here. And what I can do is I can set up a user here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There we go. And go away and add a user, which is me, Bert. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, it's totally verified. Um, so create it. I can now um, somewhere set a password. High security, as you can guess. No, it's a good password. Should stay forever. Um, and now I can assign me a couple of roles in order to go to the different tools. And that should actually do the trick. So now I should be able to log it as burned. That works. It's redirected back to operate. And I'm looking at my Combinate installation here. So that's kind of all I have for the moment. Um, I hope you find that useful. Um, we're always looking for feedback if you're um, installing it at a certain, with certain requirements in an uh, OpenShift environment or you have specific tips or specific questions, um, always reach out. The forum is a good place to do that. Um, but of course, you can also use all the channels you might know. Um, so looking forward to hear from you.